Today we are going to do a teardown video of this landline phone. So this is a very uh, old landline phone, uh, almost as old as me. And so this is the first uh, landline phone we ever had, uh, and it stopped working from the past uh, seven, eight years, and it has been sitting in the storeroom. So uh, today we're going to open this up and see what are the parts inside and what parts can be salvaged from this. So as you can see, there's no uh, spring cord from this phone to this, from this handset to this uh, phone. Uh, we have used that for another phone and so th this doesn't have that. So let's uh, start by opening up this handset. So uh, there are two metal plates here, probably for the weight, mm, fitted with two screws, we may not use that. So coming to the electronics, there are two speak, one speaker, doesn't look like a speaker but yeah I think it's a speaker, okay it's a speaker and there's a mic here, probably try to bring this out. Yeah, this is a condenser mic. And there's this connector. So this is a female connector. From here, four wires. Uh, the red and black go to the condenser mic, and the green and yellow go to the speaker. So we'll try to measure the resistance of the speaker. We'll keep that in 200 ohms mode, and we'll just measure the speaker resistance. Showing about so yeah the value is stable at 139 ohms. That's a weird uh, resistance value for a uh, speaker. Not sure what kind of speaker is that. Uh, we'll open that speaker later. First, uh, we'll keep that aside, including the screws, and we'll open this one. So we'll open this up. There are one, two, three, four, six screws. We'll open them up quickly. And uh, as you can see, there are two switches here. Which one says it's tone and pulse, probably to set the pulse. And this is a low, medium, high. There's a probably the ringtone volume here. Okay, so it's open. There's this wire holding these two pieces together we'll just open this I think it's a piezo here not a speaker it's a piezo uh, element we'll quickly open this yes so oh I think I can remove these connections yeah it's connected to these connectors yeah this is a piezo and the best way to test a piezo element is just connect an LED to it both the terminals take a just red LED connect it to the terminals like this and just tap tap the piezo see whenever I tap the piezo uh, you can see that the LED is glowing Because this uh, piezo elements, what they do is they convert the uh, mechanical vibrations to electrical signals, or uh, the vice versa. They'll conduct uh, convert the electrical signals to uh, mechanical uh, vibrations. So uh, you can use them both as a speaker and as a mic. So mostly piezos are used for contact mics, and speakers they cannot be used to uh, play high quality uh, sounds, but uh, just a ringtones or uh, kind of stuff can work with a piezo. So this is a valuable piece. We will save that. And this is a keypad board. There's a red LED here, probably working LED. And let's have a closer look at the circuit here. So this is a circuit uh, with a closer look. And as you can see, there's also a metal plate here, maybe added for the weight. I don't know why these people add these weights to the telephone. 
this one here from this connector input comes into the board from the telephone line and there are few capacitors here probably to limit the current maybe yeah so there's also a high voltage capacitor here this is a box capacitor rated at 1k i think that's 1 microfarad uh, at 250 volts 1k is 1 microfarad probably and there's this switch here which is used to uh, hang the phone Mm, there are a few ICs. It's a TEA1062A and UM91214B. Don't know what these ICs are for. So probably this uh, IC is close to this keypad. So this might be an IC which uh, converts this uh, keypad data into some serial data or some form. And maybe this IC might be some encoding stuff kind of thing. So we'll just Google that data sheets of these ICs and see later. So there's one more IC here. Uh, see the number. Have a closer look. That's a 2418B. We'll also Google that uh, one. And there are a few small capacitors, box capacitors. That's 1K63. So, so that's a small capacitor. And there are two capacitors, transistors. There are switches here. Two switches. I think this is used to uh, set the volume of the tone. This one is used to set the volume of the tone and this one for the pulse. If you have a closer look to this part here, uh, there are two capacitors with uh, diodes and I think this is a bridge rectifier. Yeah, this is a bridge rectifier circuit and probably it can be that the power coming from here is, uh, apart from the data, the whole phone is powered from the same supply coming from this uh, wire. So probably this circuit might be used to power the uh, landline phone so a part of the power is taken so uh, i think most of you know that the voltage coming from the power line is about 55 volts and uh, i'm not sure about other countries but india it's 55 volts there's also this capacitor here it's a colorful capacitor probably that might be a code of the capacitance value that's yellow purple and orange red so let's uh, see about the ic's in the internet so we found the data sheet of this IC, TEA1062, uh, this one, this IC, smaller IC, it's a 16-bit, 16, 16 pin IC and it's a TEA1062 and 1062A, it's a low voltage transmission circuit with dialer interface, so probably it's a encoding IC and it says that it's a Philips made here. As I said, it's an encoding IC, it's used for transmission and it can transmit at low voltage also. It's a low voltage transmission circuit with dialer interface. So now let's search for the other one. It's a UM91214B. Let's search for that. So uh, finally I found about this uh, UM91214B IC. It's a tone pulse dialer corporate. Yeah, it's a tone pulse dialer and it's made by umc corporation so the um first two letters uh, represent the company name umc corporation i don't think we need to um, we need the data sheets of this let's try to get the circuit of this i see just for a idea so here's the circuit for this uh, um91214b and as you can see there's a, a very simple circuitry and you can directly make a keypad with this so might be that the case the keypad uh, from this board uh, they are wise so which probably converts it to the tone output so here it shows there should be a crystal here of uh, 3.58 megahertz let's try to find that out in this and there should also be a xena 3.2 volts uh, xena here so let's see where if they are there on this circuit and no i don't find no here yeah, it's this is a crystal yeah this one is a crystal here it says uh 3.58 i'm not a, yeah here it says 3.58 z that's a crystal here that's not a capacitor it's a crystal you can find the difference from the terminals in the uh quality the texture of the uh crystal the ceramic capacitors are uh, ceramic capacitors look different from these crystals this is a it's more kind of an oscillator than a crystal. Next, uh, there should be a Zenar. Uh, 
and you cannot find a Xenar. Probably this is a Xenar. Well, it's blue in color, I'm not sure. Probably this uh, might be the Xenar. So here's the crystal and here's the Xenar. And the uh, uh, numbers come from this keypad to this IC. So we have one more IC here, K2418B. We'll try to find what's that. So here uh, I found about this IC. It's a ringer with bridge diode. I'm not sure what that means. But yeah, it's a kind of a tone generator IC. And as you can see, when the circuits show that, there's some kind of a trigger given to the two pins and the K2418 is a special ringing IC produced by Samsung company. Whoa. So yeah, one of the ICs is Philips and this is Samsung. Great. It's used as a ringing, used ringing circuitry many of kinds. So yeah, it's, uh, maybe this is used to generate the ringing sound for the ringtone of the landline phone. Okay, so the switch here is uh, used to set the volume of the ringing. So this is close to this IC and the speaker, that's the piezo which we uh, salvaged earlier, is also connected here. As you can see these two pins, uh, the piezo is connected to these two pins. So the output of this is connected to this. And so this doesn't have any relation to the speaker and the mic of the phone. So those are different. Those are directly connected to this uh, TEA1062A for encoding and stuff. But this one is only used to generate the ringing tone of the landline phone. So it's uh, connected close to this uh, piezo and also the volume control switches. Next, this switch. So uh, if you ask me, it's always good to salvage these switches because uh, most of the landline phones have a problem that uh, this switch malfunctions most of the time so it's always better to desolder them and save them so that uh, they can be used in other phone let's try to open the board first so there's no uh, there are no um, components here on this side so it's a single side uh, PCB yeah so now uh, let's open the switch uh, side so this is the switch board uh, these are switches. As you can see, it's pretty dusty because it's years old. And if I remove this cover, you can see the contacts here. These are copper contacts on the PCB directly uh, laid on the PCB. And one of the things I can salvage is this LED here. I think that should be a working one. And all these contacts can be used because it's a. I think it's a hex keypad, probably. And it's four into four. Yeah, that's a hex keypad. That can be used as a hex keypad because. There are 11 connections used to control 16 switches. So let's see uh, how that works. Probably two of these connections are for this LED. And yes, this first one, first wire, the wire runs directly from the sides to this LED. And the second one also runs from there to the second terminal. So these two terminals are for LED. And probably the other nine are also related to something. And I can salvage this keypad also. But these contacts are always helpful to take power from the uh, landline phone. Look for my video where I show you how to uh, light up an LED from the power coming from the telephone line. Next, uh, coming to this IC. This IC uh, will surely be helpful. I'm going to save that IC and probably make a small uh, ringtone generation IC uh, circuit from that. And the handset. There are uh, two very important things in the handset. One is the speaker here. And the other thing is the mic, the condenser mic. The condenser mic is also very helpful and even the connector. So uh, I'll see what I can do with this and let's try to open the speaker up. It's a sealed speaker. I'm not sure if we can open it, but let's try. So I'll try to open the speaker with a small screwdriver. Okay, so finally the cap is out and my finger started painting. So, uh, okay, there's one more. It's sealed the one. Oh my god, it's a sealed. Okay, we cannot remove the diaphragm here. The diaphragm is stuck to this one. And the wire is pretty thin. So maybe that's the reason the resistance is so high. It's around 139, 140 ohms. I'm not sure if the speaker is working or not. I'll probably test it with some circuit anywhere. And yes, that's a good speaker. I'll probably connect this back. Don't want to waste it. So that's it for this uh, teardown video. I'll probably see you in my next video. And 
Uh, if you like this video, you might like some of my other videos too. Please check them out uh, in the links and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.